Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on functional analysis. In this video, we're going to prove uh, that another important, uh, uh, important metric space is complete, and that metric space is often denoted C. And you must not confuse it with the complex plane. The complex plane we would denote C with a bar there. This is not the complex plane. C instead is the set containing all sequences x of either real or complex numbers, uh, so x1, x2, so you can have the real C and the complex C, uh, where the real C is the set containing all real sequences and uh, the um, complex C is the set containing all complex sequences, and of course it's not just the set containing all sequences, uh, no, uh, these sequences have to be convergent, so they have to be convergent. So X needs to be convergent. So it's the set of all convergent sequences of real or complex numbers. That's what C is, and we're going to prove that this is a um, is a uh, complete metric space. But of course, I haven't yet told you what the metric is on this on this uh, set. So we're going to put the same metric on it as we put on L infinity. So we're going to put the D infinity metric on it. So um, the reason we can do that is because C is actually a subset of L infinity. Remember, L infinity is the set of all bounded sequences. And uh, one of the things we've proven um, for metric spaces, but it certainly holds true in the real line and the, or the complex line, uh, numbers or the complex plane, is that uh, any convergent subset, uh, any conver sorry, any convergent sequence, so any sequence that is within this set C is also going to be a bounded sequence. Therefore, uh, this is a strict, uh, this is strictly included in uh, L infinity because there are certainly bounded sequences that are not convergent. For instance, just think 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, etc. Okay, uh, so. Um, because C is, an, is a subset of L infinity, we can think of C D infinity as being a sub-metric space, a subspace of the L infinity uh, D infinity metric space. So basically what we're doing is we're saying just restrict this metric down onto, um, onto uh, the subset C. So basically, uh, remember what D infinity is, what, remember what a metric is. Um, it's defined on the Cartesian product of a set with itself. So let's say this is the set uh, L infinity. But L infinity can be split into two things. It can be split into all the sequences that are in C, and then all of the sequences that aren't in C. So L infinity minus C. So the complement of L infinity, uh, the complement of C in L infinity. Uh, so if we do that, if we think of it as those two things, then um, basically uh, the Cartesian product space will uh, include four of these segments. Now, we're only interested in this one now, because we're interested in C crossed with C. We're interested in defining a metric on this set C, which is a function which is going to map C uh, cross C onto uh, the non-negative real numbers. The metric that we've got so far maps the whole of L infinity on uh, cross L infinity onto a non-negative real numbers. So it's defined on all of this bit of the Cartesian product as well. But we're not interested in that orange bit. We're only interested in this. So I'm saying just to look at the um, function d infinity act as acting on uh, this subset here. So d infinity acts on here and maps them onto uh, non-negative real numbers. And basically. Uh, we've seen in previous videos that uh, if you restrict the metric just down to acting on the Cartesian product of C with itself, uh, then that will also form a metric, because firstly, the first axiom of metric space is that it's mapping you onto a non-negative real number. That will certainly be true, uh, because uh, the whole thing was a metric, uh, so it, act it mapped every single one of this, or one of the elements in this entire uh, Cartesian product of L infinity with itself onto a non-negative real number. So it's certainly going to map uh, this subset here onto non-negative real numbers. So one, we can check, tick. Two is that um, 
the distance between any two, if you take the same point, if you ask what the distance between a point and itself is, that that should equal zero, i.e. the diagonal terms should equal zero, well these diagonal terms here should equal zero, but because the whole thing was a metric, the diagonal, the all of the diagonal terms along here had to equal zero, so certainly when you take that subset of the diagonal terms, they are going to equal zero. Similarly, the co well, the converse of um, that statement was that if you have two non equal points, so if you have x and y which are not uh, the same point in the metric space, then that should not equal zero, so that's positive definiteness, and that's basically uh, the statement that all the off-diagonal terms should be strictly non-zero, so they should be strictly positive. Okay, uh, but if the again, if the entire entire fun if the function acting on the entire l infinity cross l infinity product space Cartesian product space uh, was. Uh, mapping all the off-diagonal terms onto a uh, strictly positive number, then certainly when we restrict it down to here, the off-diagonal terms will still be mapped onto a non-zero value. Third property was symmetry. Again, that's obvious. Uh, the distance between x and y is equal to the distance between y and x. So basically, if you take a uh, point here, uh, the value it's mapped onto is the same as its symmetric point in the diagonal line. So uh, its reflection in the diagonal line will be ascribed the same uh, value by this function. Again, if the whole thing's a metric, then every um, every um, uh, the the reflection of every point in this entire thing is going to be w equal to one another. So uh, certainly when you restrict it down to just here, then that's going to be true. And again, the triangle inequality four, that if I take the distance between x and y, that that should be less than or equal to the distance between x and z, plus the distance between z and y, where x, y, and z are now in C, but of course you could just think of this as being the whole metric space, because it's a metric space, these points, x, y, and z, if they are in C, they're certainly in L infinity, so if this was true in the whole, in the bigger metric space, it's certainly got to be true in here, basically, providing x, y, and z are all elements of C. Okay, so that's why uh, this set is a metric space under d-infinity. Uh, it inherits the metrical properties from l-infinity. So what we want now want to prove is that this metric space is actually closed. So this subspace of l-infinity, C, uh, C, this set of convergent sequences along with the metric d-infinity, we want to prove that it is complete. Okay, and the way we're going to do this is by uh, showing... Uh, but we're going to use the fact that L infinity is complete. So we have L infinity here, okay? Right, so this is L infinity. As a subset of it, we have the set of convergent sequences. So we have C here. Right. So we need to take... We need to... Um, we need to uh, take a Cauchy sequence in C. So we need to take a Cauchy sequence in C. So let's say we have... Uh, S, which is a Cauchy sequence in C. So we've got S1, S2, S3, S4, etc. And this is a Cauchy sequence in C. S1, S2, S3. So all of these elements are in C. So they are all convergent sequences. So Sn is an element of C. Right? So what we now need to prove is that it converges to something in C. What we know is that... Um, is that we can go out, we can go into the bigger metric space, we can go into L infinity. So imagine stepping out of C, uh, imagine breaking down this boundary C and just saying now we're working in the larger uh, metric space L infinity. What we know is that if Sn are all elements of C, that implies that they are all elements of L, okay? And L infinity rather. And if this sequence, S1, S2, S3, etc., is a Cauchy sequence in C, uh, then that means that uh, there exists some point S big N. So for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists uh, a, a big N, which is an element of the natural numbers, such that if little n and little m are greater than or equal to big N, so if you take any two points beyond this term in the sequence, so some s little n and some s little m, if you take any two points in, within this tail end of the sequence beyond big N, then the, uh, the distance, d infinity, of Sn, Sm needs to be less than epsilon. That statement is still going to be true if we view these as being points in L infinity. The metric, the d infinity between them is exactly the same if you imagine them in the bigger space than if you, as if you imagine them in the smaller space. So, 
this basically is a Cauchy sequence in L infinity. So if it's a Cauchy sequence in C, it's also a Cauchy sequence in L infinity. That implies, because we've just shown that L infinity is a complete space, so that implies it converges to some limit L, which is in L infinity. So we know it converges to some limit in L infinity, basically. What we now want to show is that L has to be in uh, in C, basically, i.e. that L cannot be... Uh, cannot not be in C, i.e. Uh, that uh, if you have a convergent sequence like this, so this now is a convergent sequence, S1, S2, S3, etc., converging to L, what we want to show is that this sequence must be, uh, con uh, sorry, must itself be convergent. So, we want to show that L is an element of C, which is exactly the statement that this sequence L, which is L1, L2, L3, etc., that's exactly the statement. If L is in C, it implies this sequence is convergent. So we want to show that if we have a Cauchy sequence, a, a Cauchy sequence of convergent sequences um, in, uh, this, um, in this metric space L infinity, that it's going to converge on another uh, convergent sequence, basically. That's our aim to show that, and we will begin that in the next video.